Want to collect safe, growing, passive dividend income? Does a market smashing yield of 4.4% excite you? Looking for a great deal on a great stock in today's expensive stock market? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before we get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a large regional bank that is a crucial part of the US financial infrastructure. The banking business model is one of the oldest business models around. We're talking about something that dates back to ancient history here. You know why it survived so long? That's because the banking business model is a fantastic business model that can make a ton of money. And shareholders in high quality banks benefit from this through growing profits and growing dividends. I have personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. Best of all, the stock looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Huntington Bank Shares Incorporated, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Huntington Bank Shares Incorporated, stock ticker HBAN, is a regional bank holding company that offers a range of traditional banking services such as deposits, auto financing, mortgages, and insurance products. Founded in 1866, Huntington is now a $19 billion by market cap major Midwest player that employs almost 16,000 people. Huntington operates over 800 branches which are located in the American Midwest region. Their core market is Ohio. They rank third in deposit share in Ohio, holding 15% of the state's deposits. The pandemic has made the last year difficult for almost all people and all businesses, and banks are no exception. However, U.S. banks came out of the pandemic in better condition than expected, and there's much to look forward to for U.S. banks. A global economic recovery and the possibility of rising interest rates rank high on that list. That's speaking about U.S. banks generally. In regard to Huntington specifically, they just closed on an exciting merger with fellow Midwestern bank, TCF Financial Corp. This move provides instant scale and creates a formidable competitor. The new regional powerhouse has over $135 billion in total deposits. It's now a top 25 bank in the United States. Due to an overlapping footprint in the Midwestern region, Huntington sees room for significant synergies, approximately 37% of TCF's non-interest expense. While it'll take time to work everything out, this merger could end up being a tremendous win for the combined organization. For instance, Huntington has stated that it expects the transaction to be 18% accretive to 2022 earnings per share. That kind of substantial accretive growth translates to higher profits, and it gives the bank the ability to pay out even bigger dividends. Already, Huntington has increased its dividend for 10 consecutive years. The five-year dividend growth rate is 20.1%. That's an incredible growth rate on its own, but it's especially incredible when you see that the stock also yields 4.4%. This market-smashing yield is 90 basis points higher than the stock's own five-year average yield. In my view, it's a very compelling combination of yield and growth. However, more recent dividend increases have been in the mid-single-digit range, and dividend growth is currently on pause as the bank waits for the Federal Reserve to allow them to increase capital returns to shareholders. But with a payout ratio of only 52.6%, the bank is positioned to hand out a sizable dividend increase once they're given the go-ahead. Looking at business growth, Huntington increased its revenue from $2.616 billion in fiscal year 2011 to $4.815 billion in fiscal year 2020. That's a compound annual growth rate of 7.01%. Very strong top-line growth. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $0.59 cents to $0.69 cents over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 1.75%. This looks rather poor on its face. However, it's poor largely because of the pandemic's impact on the bank's fiscal year 2020 earnings per share. 
Huntington, like pretty much every other U.S. bank, had to secure protective loan loss provisions throughout 2020. These reserves are now being released throughout 2021, which is causing earnings per share to spring back to normal. If we were to back things up one year to fiscal year 2019, the nine-year earnings per share compound annual growth rate would be slightly over 10%. An investor needs to look past the recent chaos and skate to where the puck is going. In that sense, with the release of reserves and an accretive merger now closed, Huntington is in a great spot for bottom line growth. Looking forward, CFRA is projecting that Huntington will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 5% over the next three years. I usually agree with CFRA's earnings per share forecasts. In this case, though, I think they're being awfully conservative. CFRA notes the high possibility of additional reserve releases throughout 2021, and they also acknowledge that the merger will likely improve the bank, and I quote, from competitive geographic and product standpoints, unquote. If Huntington was typically able to grow its bottom line at a low double-digit annual rate prior to the merger, Merger, and if this merger truly is accretive, I'm not sure why they'd suddenly be able to only manage half the growth they were able to manage before. But even if we were to take CFRA's forecast as the base case, Huntington would still be able to hand out high single digit dividend increases for the foreseeable future. The modest payout ratio gives them that kind of flexibility. And if CFRA's forecast ends up being too conservative, future dividend raises could be quite large. Moving over to the balance sheet, the bank has a rock solid financial position. They have total assets of $123 billion against $105 billion in total liabilities. Credit ratings for the Huntington National Bank's senior unsecured notes are well into investment grade territory and are as follows, A minus S&P, A3 Moody's, and A minus Fitch. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 23.54% and annual return on equity of 10.73%. Net interest margin is at 2.99% for the last fiscal year. Huntington offers investors an appealing case for investment. It's a high quality regional bank that just closed an accretive merger and is actively releasing reserves. They're scaling up just in time for an economic recovery. Plus, rates might rise faster than anticipated. And they do have durable competitive advantages that include scale, switching costs, and a large deposit base. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. A lower for longer paradigm around interest rates is a major headwind for all banks, although the Federal Reserve has seemed to shift its narrative toward raising rates faster than originally scheduled. Banks are highly exposed to economic cycles and the current cycle is fraught with uncertainty. Any residual effects from the economic shutdowns related to the pandemic could leave a lasting scar on the economy and the bank. If a long-term recession were to occur, this would hurt the bank twice over. Less economic activity limits growth while loan losses stress the balance sheet. There's also near-term execution risk with the TCF merger. With these risks known, this is still an intriguing long-term investment. The current valuation only serves to make it more intriguing. The price-to-earnings ratio is 11.9 right now. That's well below the broader market's earnings multiple. It's also below the stock's own five-year average price-to-earnings ratio of 14.2. And the yield, as noted earlier, is materially higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 9% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 5.5%. This is arguably a super cautious take on the long-term dividend growth picture. The bank's long-term earnings per share growth greatly exceeds this level once throwing out the anomalous fiscal year 2020, as does the dividend growth over the last five and 10 years. And with a moderate payout ratio and accretive growth underway, it would seem likely that the bank greatly outdoes this mark. On the other hand, CFRA is projecting only 5% earnings per share growth over the next three years. There is merger execution risk at play and the economic recovery is still underway. I'd rather err on the side of caution, all things considered. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $18.09. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates HBAN as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $18. CFRA rates HBAN as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $16. I came out within pennies of where Morningstar is at. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $17.36, which would indicate the stock is possibly 27% undervalued. 
Here's the bottom line, guys. Huntington Bank Shares Incorporated is a high quality regional bank that just closed on an accretive merger that gives them additional scale precisely when additional scale is helpful to benefit from an economic recovery. With a market smashing yield of 4.4%, 10 consecutive years of dividend raises, double digit dividend growth, a moderate payout ratio, and the potential that shares are 27% undervalued, dividend growth investors should strongly consider depositing some of these shares into their portfolios. And now for a special news announcement. Wells Fargo recently did some channel checks on Home Depot Inc. stock ticker HD. The home improvement retailer impressed big time. Wells Fargo said that execution appears strong and it views continued elevated demand as a theme moving forward. We put out a video on Home Depot back in March when the stock was around $250 a share, noting how undervalued it looked to be. It seems that our rationale has proven right. Make sure to keep this world-class retailer on your radar. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.